Oh boy, here we go. So, Jiren is underrated, and I'm going to tell you why. However, it's not in the way that you would expect him to be underrated, and in a sense, the way that he is overrated lends to the reasons he is underrated and underappreciated as a character and as an antagonist. Now, as many of you who have been following me for a while will probably know, I have stated that Jiren would lose to Broly if they were to face off 1v1. At first, I had them quite close, but I still gave Broly the victory due to endurance and his ability to keep growing in power. Since this superhero movie, it's become quite clear that Toriyama didn't actually intend for Jiren in terms of his raw power reserves, and I'm talking about raw power reserves alone, to be that much beyond the levels of the Super Saiyan Blue extensions. Now, when I say Super Saiyan Blue extensions, I'm talking about Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken for Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution for Vegeta. Based on the quotes from Vegeta in the superhero movie, written by Toriyama himself, in the author's view, Jiren, wasn't that much stronger than those two versions of those two characters in the Dragon Ball Super Tournament of Power. And of course, I've been on record with a recent video that concerns Jiren vs Broly, saying that the gap that I initially thought they had in terms of raw power between them is actually a lot wider than even I thought. So hang on, Revolution, are you shitting on Jiren again? That's the accusation I often hear about me when I talk earnestly and honestly about Jiren and my interpretation of Jiren's character from the series. But actually, I'm not shitting on Jiren. Don't this get me is wrong. Often I've bantered the Jirenettes, but it really is just a reaction to the absolute torrent of criticism I got when I first initially said somebody like Broly could beat Jiren and went against the common narrative at the time that the tournaments of power levels were stronger than the Broly movie power levels and that Jiren was stronger than all God's destructions including Beerus. What we're going to be dealing with mostly in this video is pretty much the manga but, but it's important to understand the influence Toei's Dragon Ball Super anime had on the interpretation of Jiren's character. Toei have a lot to answer for, especially in the power scaling sense. Jiren in the Tournament of Power was obviously stated to be stronger than Belmod, and then there was the whole episode 93 comments from Wee saying that A God of Destruction beat Beerus in an arm wrestle and therefore he's stronger. The manga literally contradicted that. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't mean that, or it can't mean that, or you can't just look at the anime in the vacuum and they have a different answer, very much to the like the Kid Buu situation in the anime in the manga of Dragon Ball Z, that might be the same case for Jiren. But what it did was lead a lot of people to believe that Jiren was ultimately far beyond the gods of destructions. Even though I initially thought that may be the case after episode 93, I felt like a lot of things happened that maybe become skeptical of Jiren being stronger than all gods of destructions. But the depiction of Jiren and Ultra Instinct in the anime is different to that of the manga. It is more thoroughly detailed in the manga, but it is the anime and the hype surrounding the anime. It was the last arc of the anime. They had to go big and they did. And Jiren came across as an unbreachable wall and Chad, essentially. That led to the Jiren vs Broly Wars, which went on for years and I was heavily involved in. But the manga definitely has a different depiction of Jiren. And while some people like to use interpretive scaling to, I guess, put forward a possibility of Jiren still being in the mix, in terms of traditional scaling, it's very hard to get Jiren up there. It's nigh impossible, in fact. Now, obviously, Vegeta in the superhero movie is training to be more like Jiren. Now, I have heard people say that this proves that Jiren is the benchmark and they're looking to reach Jiren. And obviously, we're going to have to go through both the movie statements and the manga statements as they are slightly different, but we'll go over and compare and contrast those in just a moment. And I'll even go on record saying this, the change that the Toyo Toro made in the manga to those statements should raise an air of skepticism. Skepticism is very important when looking at power scaling and the skepticism is what allowed me to explore the idea that Beerus is still the strongest and that Jiren wasn't stronger than all the gods after all. And it is ultimately paid off in terms of prognosticating. But in terms of Jiren being the benchmark, those statements are simply referring to him being the benchmark in terms of becoming efficient with his power. As he states, Jiren was so overwhelmingly strong. That is how Jiren's portrayed, and he was. And yet his power really wasn't so different from our own. That's the reality. Then the context is given about the efficiency. Vegeta is literally citing Jiren's efficiency as the problem that they couldn't overcome. So even now, Goku and Vegeta, as of the superhero arc, are more powerful in terms of raw power over Jiren from the Tournament of Power. 
even his efficiency levels were above Goku and Vegeta's, even as recently as the superhero arc. However, that does not mean that his raw power reserves have to be higher than theirs. Being efficient with your power and having a higher raw power base don't have to go hand in hand. Like I said, this is why Jiren's underrated. So in a video I released quite recently about Master Roshi and why he is not Super Saiyan Blue level for facing off against Jiren, I talked about how Jiren, under the rules of the tournament's power where killing wasn't allowed, would have had to limit his power outputs to match those of those that were weaker than him so that he didn't kill them. Obviously, you could say that the likes of Goku and Hit are weaker than Jiren, but, you know, they might be in the mix in terms of fighting. Whereas Master Roshi simply isn't. He's vastly weaker. Jiren could literally tap him out of existence if he wanted to, but Jiren had to lower his power down to Roshi's level. The whole story of Master Roshi vs Jiren was, if they were to fight at the same level, Roshi was actually a more skilled martial artist than Jiren. But the moment Jiren realised he was being outskilled, he knocked him out the arena quite casually by most likely just upping his power slightly. So whilst many people do attribute the efficiency quotes to the superhero movie, there are hints of Jiren being extremely efficient with his power in the Tournament of Power. In Chapter 39 of the Dragon Ball Super manga, Jiren is facing against Super Saiyan Blue Goku. As we know, he's trying multiple different attacks. Jiren gets frustrated that he's trying the same attacks over and over again. Goku is not making a dent on Jiren. Now guys, what I want you to do is take a look at your screen if you're just listening to this like a podcast per se. These are numbers for Jiren and Goku. Now, these are not official power levels. They are just numbers for demonstration and simplicity's sake. If Jiren had a power level of 1 million and Goku had a power of 800,000, but Jiren could handle reliably 99% of his power, whereas Goku can only reliably handle 85% of his power. And when I say power, I'm talking about their raw power reserves then it's unlikely Goku is really going to be hitting Jiren at his full power anyway, even though his full power is weaker than Jiren's full power. And the gap between them, as time passes on, in terms of a battle of attrition, Goku is going to reduce his power rather quickly, whereas Jiren's power is not going to budge at all. So it's going to seem like his power would be endless. Because so Goku I offer this, two powerlifters, powerlifter A and powerlifter B. Both are squatting 225 pounds. However, powerlifter A is only working about 80% intensity compared to his max power and has perfect technique. However, Powerlifter B is lifting at 100% intensity and his technique and his form isn't quite as good. What's going to happen over the long run between these two powerlifters? Now, obviously we know that Goku tried to use the Kaioken in the Tournament's Power of the Manga, but Kaioken is an extremely strenuous technique and if he cannot even utilize 100% of his power correctly in his Super Saiyan Blue form, which we know is an already fatiguing form. Remember, Jiren's in his base form, essentially. He's not even using a transformation. When he stacks Kaioken on top, and he's literally destroying his body to do it, his wielding of that power, that extra power that he's now just stacked on top, is going to be even more unreliable. Now, we don't know what the Kaioken multiplier was in the manga. It's never really truly stated. And once again, these numbers are not actual power levels. But let's say Goku's Kaioken stacked on top of his blue form raised his raw power reserves to 900,000. Still less than Jiren's. As we know, Jiren is stronger than them, even with their blue extension forms. Whilst Goku may be actually increasing his raw power reserves after all he did state that he needs more raw power it could actually hamper how proficient he is with that power and may actually lower his efficiency due to the damage it's doing to his body as Jiren states about Goku using Kaioken and Goku does land on Jiren using the Kaioken Jiren states about Goku's Kaioken power gained by destroying your body can't necessarily be wielded properly you made the very same mistake as that Saiyan named Kale earlier remember Kale got her legendary Super Saiyan form or her Super Saiyan full power, whatever you want to call it. But whilst they are increasing their power, they cannot wield their full power properly. And don't worry, guys, I'll get to Broly in just a moment. This is why the manga uses the whole Roshi example as a means for Goku to overcome that discrepancy in terms of his efficiency when tackling Jiren. Roshi starts talking about using martial arts ability. And as we see that when Jiren has to lower his power down to Roshi's level in order to not kill him as per the tournament's power rules, Roshi outskills him. And, and that is the whole lesson that Roshi is trying to teach Goku. This is actually good development for Goku's character, believe it or not. And it's through these means that 
Goku is able to achieve Ultra Instinct. Now, this transformation, Ultra Instinct, does it lead to a higher level of power reserves? I do believe so. However, it's very plausible that Jiren's raw power reserves, when at full power, you could make a very valid argument that Jiren's raw power reserves are higher than Ultra Instinct Goku's. Hear me out. So, Goku's Ultra Instinct is a movement-based transformation. It's a package transformation. It comes with dodge hacks, speed hacks, and critical hit hacks. It ultimately exploits openings. This is a well-known effective martial arts stratagem. It's often the hits that you don't expect or see coming that do the most damage. Goku is essentially maximizing damage by using Ultra Instinct and even then he's still not doing exactly what Freezer did to him and Vegeta in the Granola arc by one-shotting them. This is closer so the attacks are on par with Jiren's power but you could still argue that for Jiren to eventually start countering this power that he would have had to have a higher power level because he doesn't have the hacks or abilities that come along with Ultra Instincts. He's having to rely on good old fashioned sheer raw power to counter Ultra Instinct. Now, we don't really see anyone particularly have the advantage once Jiren starts increasing his power mid battle to counter Ultra Instinct, and yes, he does. And whilst I've heard some claims that Jiren grows as fast as Broly, you are literally living in Cuckoo Land if you believe that. In both the anime and the manga of the Tournament of Power, Goku and Vegeta throughout that 48 minutes or get closer to Jiren's power, not vice versa. Whereas Broly literally started weaker than Goku and Vegeta and overtook them in power by a large margin. Saying they grow at a similar level is utterly ridiculous. However, because Ultra Instinct Goku's raw power is now a lot closer to Jiren's, he is therefore able to inflict some damage and start putting a dent on Jiren and lowering his power. As we know, after Goku tolls out of Ultra Instinct, Jiren is pretty much reduced to fighting against two base worn out Saiyans. However, Jiren does recoup some of his power and that is likely down to his efficiency again. Because he's far more efficient with his power, the excess wastage just simply isn't there. And once again, he's naturally in base as well. So ultimately, Jiren can wield his full power pretty much expertly and without little wastage. And as the battle wears on, the gap between him and his opponents is only going to grow even further. Ultra Instinct was literally a technique that basically countered Jiren's efficiency. That doesn't mean having efficiency and Ultra Instinct in tandem can't be even more beneficial or even Ultra Ego and efficiency can't be more beneficial. And that is why Vegeta is attempting to learn it. Here's an analogy. Mike Tyson is one of the most feared boxers ever who has an extraordinary punch. He can likely hit harder than say Muhammad Ali, another great, possibly the greatest, in the boxing world. However, whilst Mike Tyson has the hardest punch, and if they had a simple punch off to see who would win, Mike Tyson would likely win. However, Muhammad Ali has a vastly better jab. But imagine if you gave Muhammad Ali's jab to Mike Tyson, and he had both, and he could use both. He would be nigh unstoppable. And just to address the manga adaptations version of events where they talk about the efficiency and the power, whilst most people just deem it to be a Toyotaroism, he does name multiple characters. And obviously Broly's included in that, Moro's included in that, Freeze's included in that, Gas is included in that. Now, when you analyze it, you would say, well, Broly, he doesn't look like he's very efficient. And I would tend to agree, even on the page prior to that, he is literally raging out of control and losing control of his power. So it does seem a little bit absurd. Moro, when he became Planet Moro, lost his mind and didn't seem to have any control over his power. Gas, you could argue, would have got efficiency from the Wish or greater efficiency than Goku and Vegeta from the Wish, as it seems to be reflective of that universe only. Frieza may have learnt about Jiren's efficiency in the Tournament of Power and implemented it into his training. But with Broly, considering how much he raged out and considering Moro never really trained, it's hard to argue that they would have the same level of efficiency that Jiren did and that Vegeta's trying to aspire to. And the reason this was brought up in the superhero movie is because, as we know, Cell Max, according to Toriyama, is even stronger than Broly if he was able to wield his full power correctly. Obviously, he was born before he was supposed to be born. He had no mind. He had no control over his power. And that's why he has no efficiency over his power and it's why he kept getting popped off on by far weaker characters because he kept getting caught off guard he didn't know how to utilize his power properly. I would offer that it's similar to a sports computer game where whichever sport it is, the more power you go in your shots, the more wild it becomes and the harder it is to land. However, Jiren, 
unlike those characters, has perfect implementation and application over his full power. Imagine if current Ultra Instinct Goku or current Ultra Ego Vegeta had full efficiency over their power. So I would like to offer that Jiren is underrated simply whilst he may not have the raw power bank reserves of the current arc levels, he does have a higher raw power level than Ultra Instinct because he would have needed that to counteract it. He does have a high level of efficiency than even current arc Goku and Vegeta levels and he is essentially in a base form. It's all his natural power and he suffers no strain of having to transform. And if I was to argue for Jiren, if you could argue a slow incremental power creep for Goku and Vegeta's base forms throughout Super, that could potentially put Jiren in the mix of winning one-on-one -on -one fights. Jiren is the perfect representation of a character that's mastered an attribute and a skill, and Vegeta is looking to attach that to his other skills in order to become the best in the universe because it's not just about your raw power reserves anymore. You need to be able to wield it properly. And as I mentioned in a video the other day, Whis tried to tell Vegeta this and even cited it as one of Vegeta's weaknesses that he was not efficient with his power and he burns out quicker because of it. Jiren does not suffer that. Anyway, guys, that's all for this video. Smash a like on the video, not in terms of raw power, but his abilities. Let me know down in the comment section your thoughts. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Until next time, Ad Astra.